ओम सदा शिव समारंभ ओम सदा शिव समारंभ शंकर आचार्य मध्यमाचार्य ओम so in the last session we had talked about two types of uh, sambandhas connections and one was the connection of the word to the word and one was the connection of the word meaning to the word meaning we had discussed the word word connection which we call under the name samanadikaranam and now in this particular topic we will discuss the second type of connection so we will read topic 152 visheshena vishesha bhava visheshena vishesha bhava sambandhastu yatha tatraiva तत्काल विशिष्ट देवदत्त अयम शब्दार्थ एतत्काल विशिष्ट विशेषेण विशेष भाव विशिष्टचैतन्यदार्थ परोक्षत्वादि विशिष्ट चैतन्य अन्योन्य भेद व्यावर्तकतया विशेषेन विशेष भाव विशेषेन विशेष भाव संबंधस्तु सो वी आर नाउ लुकिंग एट दी सेकेंड संबंध सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ कनेक्शन विच इज बिटवीन दी शब्दार्थ टू शब्दार्थ दट इज मीनिंग ऑफ दि वर्ड टू द मीनिंग ऑफ दि वर्ड इन द लास्ट क्लास वी लुक्ट एट दि वर्ड दम से वर्ड टू वर्ड कनेक्शन नाउ दिस इज दि शब्द अर्थ टू शब्द अर्थ वर्ड टू वर्ड कनेक्शन एंड इन दि लास्ट क्लास वी टूक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सोयम देवदत्ता फोकसिंग ऑन द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड्स एंड वी सॉ दैट सह मीन्स दैट देवदत्ता आई एम मीन्स दैट देवदत्ता एंड देवदत्ता ने पर्सन सो ऑल द थ्री वर्ड्स रेफर टू द सेम पर्सन सो दैट वॉज द कनेक्शन बिटवीन द वर्ड्स नाउ हियर you have to look at it from a slightly different angle this is the same phrase sah ayam devadatta so ayam devadatta sah ayam devadatta now sah here means that person and we can for our understanding we can say that young person who was young in some previous time some previous time past and i am i am means this old dilapidated person who is the person today and devadatta is the name of the person so here the view point is slightly different devadatta is the noun it is the name of the person and this saha 
is an adjective qualifying Devadatta. I am also is an adjective qualifying Devadatta. Saha means what? That young person who was existing in the past. Obviously, that's an adjective which qualifies the name Devadatta. And I am means this old person, broken down person who is there today. It is also an adjective which is qualifying Devadatta. Now, because that person, Saha, and this person, I am, are qualifying the same noun, Devadatta, Sadananda here says that the right way to look from the second point of view, from the second relationship point of view, the right way to look is to take one as a substance and the other as the adjective. So, the relationship should be in the form of substance and adjective or substance, noun and adjective or substance and attribute. What is the substance? Devadatta is a substance. What are the attributes? Saha and Ayama attributes. And therefore, Sadananda is saying that by saying that that person, Saha, is I am, is this person, what are you actually doing? You are revealing the non-difference between the two adjectives, Saha and I am. So what you are saying is, Saha Devadatta, that Devadatta, I am Devadatta, is this Devadatta. So, that Devadatta is, Dev is this Devadatta and this Devadatta is that Devadatta. That is the meaning. So, if at all there was to be any difference between the two Devadattas, which two Devadattas? That Devadatta, Saha Devadatta. That Devadatta who was existing, say, 40 years ago, who I knew 40 years ago. And I am Devadatta, this Devadatta who I am knowing today. <clears throat> Since they are the same, what is happening is that any mutual difference between the two are being negated. Do you understand? If there is a mutual difference between that Devadatta and this Devadatta, if at all there is anything, that mutual difference is being negated by the use of this kind of a relationship. See, actually it's very simple. The only thing is that you guys are, you know, what I call, over, overwhelmed by the Sanskrit. So don't look at the Sanskrit part of it. Look at the English explanation. You are just saying there was some entity in the past and there is some entity today. And when you say that, you are presuming there is a difference. And Sadananda is saying that you see the essence behind the two people. What is the essence? That essence is this Devadatta. The Jiva called Devadatta is the essence. So any difference between the two Devadattas is being negated by the use of this kind of a connection. So this connection, this Sambandha, where you have removed, you have negated any mutual differences in meaning, Chabda Arthaha, the differences in the meaning have been removed. And so a sambandha where the mutual differences in meaning are not existing, that is being called here Visheshena Vishesha Bhava Sambandha. And what is actually revealed? The oneness. The Aikyam is revealed. So he says, Yatha, just as Tatraiva Vakyaha, in that statement, in which statement? Soyam Devadatta. That will supply. Yatha tatreve vakya soyam devadatta. In that statement which we had made, ta shabda artha, the meaning of the word sa, sa shabda artha is what? Tatkal devadatta, which is the devadatta. Tatkal means at that point of time. So this sa shabda refers to that devadatta 
of the former time, of the past time. So that's what he, that's what he says. Sada sa shabdartha tatkal vishishta devadatta. So that devadatta, which is the substance, vishishtam means qualified by tatkal, by the past. Are you, are you following? The word saha, that is referring to devadatta who is qualified by the opadi of past time, existing in the past. That is the meaning of the word saha. And I am shabda arthaha, the meaning of the word I am, this, etat kala vishishta devadatta. Etat kala means present time, this time. Etat kala vishishta means qualified by the present time devadatta. And since this is understood, he says, Anyonya bhedaha vyavar takataya. Having mutually, having negated Anyonya bhedaha, the mutual differences. That sambandha is called Visheshena Vishesha Bhava Sambandha. So he has taken an example. If you are negating the mutual differences, okay, what are the mutual differences between that, that Devadatta and this Devadatta? Let us see if you understood. Body. Because of the age. Because of the time lapse. Time lapse. So you can have one Devadatta was black haired, one Devadatta had no hair. One Devadatta was strong and smooth skin, one Devadatta has all what you call sagging skin. These are all the mutual differences. If you drop these differences, what remains? That Jiva Devadatta remains. So this Sambandha is called Visheshena Vishesha Bhava. Now we have to extend this to Jivatma and Paramatma. Remember, we are not interested in Devadattas. We are, we are interested in, Devata, in Paramatma and Jivatma. So this, having given this example, with that example, we are going to try to understand Paramatma and Jivatma. So he says, Tatha Atra, atra Api Vakya. In the same way, in, the, in this Vakyam, what vakyam? This is not soyam devadatta. This vakyam is different. What is this vakyam? Tattvamasi. Tattvamasi vakyam. So in the maha vakyam, tattvamasi, tat padhartha, the tat padhartha, the meaning of the word tat, tat padhartha. The meaning of the word tat is parokshatvadi vishishta chaitanyam. That Chaitanyam, that Atma Brahman, Vishishta qualified by Parokshatvadi. Paroksha means remote, far away from you. So, this consciousness which is qualified by the fact of being away from you, and obviously because of that, what? That consciousness has got superior attributes like omnipotence, omniscience, all these things are there. So, Tat is referring to that consciousness principle which is far away from you and which is Paramatma. Okay. Now, Paramatma here is far away from you because in the word Tat, that is a reference. And similarly says, Tvam Pada Artha Aparokshatvadi Vishishta Jaitanyam. Tvam Pada is the Chaitanyam with Aparokshatvadi Vishishta. That is qualified by being not far away from you, by being you yourself. And therefore, that is the Jivatma with limited attributes. So, Tatpada and Tvampada, what is the difference? Tatpada is consciousness plus what? <laughs> The superior upadhi. Samashti. Samashti. Samashti plus Samashti upadhi. Right? What is Samashti upadhi? The three universal bodies as the prapancha. upadhi. Right? Prapancha. The three, wor the three worlds. Three prapancha as the bodies. As his, that is the upadhi for the tatpada. What is the upadhi for tvampada? Your three bodies. And therefore, tatpada is Qualified by what? By that three prapanchas which is far away from you. And because they are superior, oh, that is Ishwara. 
Svampada is what? The same consciousness, but the Upadi is your three bodies, which are inferior. So, Nishkrishta. Nikrishta Gunaha is this one. Utkrishta Gunaha is Tat. Now, what do we do? Anyonya Bheda Vyavar Takataya. We have to remove the mutual differences. What are the mutual differences? The three universes and the three individual bodies. These you have to remove. Once you remove this, that connection now between the word meanings is called Visheshena Visheshya Bhavaha. Which means what? It indicates that Paramatma and Jivatma are the same. So we are all coming up to words which you have studied in the ATTC, okay? Now you are coming up to that Jahad, 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 Lakshana, Jahati, Jahati, Lakshana, all this is coming up. He is just introducing how these things actually work. Okay, now we look at the next topic, 153, which you will read. Lakshya, Lakshana, Sambandhas, Thu. Yatha tatraiva sa shabda ayam shabda yo ho. Yatha tatraiva shabda ayam shabda yo ho. Tadartha yo ho. Tadartha yo ho. Va virudda tatkale tatkala vishishtatva. Parityagena Aviruddha Devadatena Saha Laksha Lakshana Bhavaha Laksha Lakshana Bhavaha Tatatrabi Vaki Tatvam padayo ho. Tathatra padayo ho. Tadartha yo ho. Tadartha yo ho. Va viruddha parokshatva. Va viruddha parokshatva. Aparokshatva di vishishtatva. Parityagena Aviruddha Chaitanyena Parityagena Aviruddha Chaitanyena Sahalaksha Lakshana Bhava Okay, now we have come to the conclusion that Tatpada and Tvampada are not different. Okay. Now, there's somebody might get up and say, how can you say that? Because when you are saying that, what are you doing? You are equating the young Devadatta and the old Devadatta. But these, the young is one attribute, old is one attribute. They are totally different attributes. How can you equate them? So, that is being answered. Are we equating the attributes? No. We are not equating the opposite attributes. So, the equation at all, if it has to be between these two, can be achieved only by dropping the opposing attributes. It is a fact that young Devadatta, old Devadatta have opposing attributes. So, they cannot really be dropped. But by intellectually knocking them off, by temporarily dropping the opposing attributes, intellectually of course, which is what you are eliminating the, the attribute young and the attribute old. Why? Because the attribute young connects to a different deshakala, a different place and a different time. The attribute old connects to a completely different deshakala. Again, different place, different time. So when this deshakala connected attributes are being dropped, what do, you, what do you actually see? You recognize the essential Devadatta. That Devadatta who is free from attributes. Old or young. This is the Lakshyartham of Soyam Devadatta. 
Okay, why is it all important? All is important for you to understand what you mean when you say I. The entire study of Vedanta has any benefit, if it has any benefit, that benefit can only come when every time you use the word I, you know exactly what you mean. That is what the whole Mahavakyam study is. You have to know what you mean by I. So this Devadatta who is neither old nor young, it doesn't mean that he is suspended in time. Okay, It just means that, that both the attributes, the young Devadatta attribute, the old Devadatta attribute have been removed. This connection between the two meanings is called Lakshya Lakshana Sambandaha, which means the Lakshya Artha. The other one was what? It was the Vachya Artha. So, so he says here, Yatha Tatra Eva, just as in that same statement, which statement? Soyam, Soyam Devadattaha. The Devadatta with attributes is called Lakshana. The Devadatta without attributes is called Lakshya. Right? This is, this is the connection. Lakshya, Lakshana. The attributeless Devadatta and the attribute full Devadatta, attributed Devadatta. Similarly, he says, Tatraeva, similarly, Sa Shabda, Ayam Shabda Yoho, the words Saha and Ayam, that and this, or Va Tadartha Yoho, so he's taking both together, either the words, Sa Shabda, Ayam Shabda, Va Tadartha Yoho, that means Sa Shabda Artha, and I am Shabda Artha. So you can take either the words or the meanings, take either of them. In both the cases, he says, Viruddha Tatkal Etatkal Vishishtatva Parityagena. After having dropped Viruddha Tatkal Etatkal, the opposite features, Tatkal is of belonging to the old Devadatta, Etatkal is belonging to the Devadatta of the present time. So, Tatkal, Etatkal, Vishishtatva, the adjectives or the opposite features which belong to the past and the present, Viruddha, which are opposing. Once you have dropped them, Parityagena, what happens? Aviruddha Devadattena, Saha Lakshya Lakshana Bhavaha. Without these contradictory or without these opposite attributes, when you drop the opposite attributes, the meaning that you extract from the Soyam Devadatta after dropping the young and old attribute, that is the Lakshyartham, the implied meaning of Devadatta. So earlier he, we, came, we came across the Vachyartham of Devadatta, the, the word meaning. The literal meaning. Now he is saying this is the implied meaning, not the direct meaning. Having said that, then he says, Tatra api vakye he. Also, in this Mahavakyam Tattvamasi, Tat Tvam Padayoho, the two words Tat and Tvam, Va Tadarthayoho, or the meanings of the two words Tat and Tvam, what should you do? Viruddha. Parokshatva, Aparokshvatadi, Vashishtatva. The opposing Viruddha, Parokshatva, Aparokshvatadi, Vashishtatva. Having dropped the superior and inferior attributes, which are what? Paramatma, Jivatma attributes, which are what? Samashti, RM and RC. Parokshatva here means far away from you. We take it as superior attributes, which are what attributes? Samashti, Rm and Rc. And Aparokshatvadi, Vishishtatva, these are inferior attributes, Vyashti, Rm and Rc. What do you have to do? Parityagena. You have to eliminate them from your thinking process. What remains? What you extract after removing these things? 
ಅವಿರುದ್ಧ ಚೈತನ್ಯೇನ ಸಹ ಲಕ್ಷ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಭಾವ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ನಾನ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಟ್ರಿ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಅವಿರುದ್ಧ ಅವಿರುದ್ಧ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ನೋ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಟ್ರಿ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಸಹ ಅವಿರುದ್ಧ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಡಿಕ್ಟ್ರಿ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಭಾವ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯಾರ್ಥಂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ತತ್ತಂತ್ವ ಸೊ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಯರ್ ವೇ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಭಾಗ ತ್ಯಾಗ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಭಾಗ ತ್ಯಾಗ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಯು ಡ್ರಾಪ್ one portion and retain one portion so bhaga one portion tyaga you drop okay. and i explained in the last class if you are saying i am eating the banana what is happening you are dropping the peel part and retaining the fruit part so this is called the lakshyartham not the vasyartham okay now remember there are two other words which are used which is ajahati lakshana and jahati lakshana or jahad lakshana ajahad lakshana so jahati means what does jahati mean very good some of the word to give up sorry to give up is it to give up just to give up but where did you see this word in bhagavad gita rajahati rajahati yada kama ಬಿಕಾಸ್ having introduced the particular uh, word he talks about a few other things before he actually gives you the meaning so we look at topic number 154 and we will read iyam eva iyam iyam eva bhaga lakshane tyuchyate bhaga lakshane tyuchyate so he has said now that iyam eva this method of what of dropping something and arriving at the pure consciousness what have you dropped in the case of jeevatma you have dropped the three bodies in the case of paramatma you have dropped the three universes prapancha trayam you have dropped and then you have arrived at the pure atma or pure consci- consciousness without the opposing attributes that is what we saw in the last topic so em ever refers to that whole process the entire prakriya the method of doing that uchyate he says that method which i talked about in the last topic is called bhag lakshanam bhag lakshanam we it it's the normal uh, term is bhag tyaga lakshana it's also called bhag lakshana as i said it is also called jahad ajah lakshana jahati ajahati lakshana these are all different names for the same process of bhaga tyaga okay now we look at topic number 155 a little more technical topic so we will read asmin vakye asmin vakye neelam utpalam iti ವಾಕ್ಯವತ್ ವಾಕ್ಯಾಗತೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಹವ್ ಟು ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಸೈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ so let us recall what we and did so far we were trying to understand we are trying to understand the mahavakyam tatvamasi and we saw through three stages the first is samanadikarana sambandha that is the first connection between words and words 
ವಿಶೇಷ ವಿಶೇಷಣ ಭಾವ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಭಾವ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ಇಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಸೋಯಂ ದೇವದತ್ತ ವಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ವಿ ಇಕ್ವೇಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ದೇವದತ್ತ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಯಂಗ್ ದೇವದತ್ತ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ವಿ ಸಿ they wouldn't really be equal because they had opposing attributes one attribute of was young and one attribute was old and therefore we showed that because these opposite attributes were present the equation of the two devadattas is possible only using one method which we call bhaga tyaga lakshana and what is that method you remove the attributes which are op- in opposition so you are removing the youthful attributes and removing the elderly attributes of the two different devadattas to arrive at the one person the vyakti which devadatta is this is the vyakti part of it the real person devadatta without the you know without the old and young so this is a good opportunity for mananam you know you keep saying i right when you were 20 years old i mean of course many of you are still 20 years old but still assuming that some of you have changed when you were 20 years old you use the word i for yourself that example is not different from soyam devadatta because you were young you had completely different attributes bodily attributes even mental attributes today after 20 years you still use the word i your attributes have changed but whenever you are using the word i are you not applying bhagatyaga lakshana without knowing what bhagatyaga lakshana is you have been applying it very nicely in your life so far all one no questions okay now now comes the puro pakshi what is a puro pakshi it's not a bird pakshi is a bird usually but puro pakshi is not a bird so there was somebody you told me puro pakshi means old bird because puro is old and you know pakshi is bird. it's not puro pakshi is the opposite camp the person who has different views so this puro pakshi he says are why are you going through all these three stages it is not necessary you are unnecessarily increasing confusion okay he says we can manage with just two stages right he gives the example for example in this oyam devadatta example you took three stages and that example is not a correct one he says because you have not thought it through through you, know, you just to prove your point you are giving all sort of examples this i will give an example with only two stages so he takes a, takes the example of neelam utpalam so neelam means blue and utpal means lotus okay now here he says that there were only two stages samanya adhikaranam and vishesha visheshana bhavah the words and the meaning of the words what was the third one the bhagatyaga lakshana the bhagatyaga lakshana part see there are two things one is the words one is the meaning of the words and there is a bhagatyaga lakshana part this was the, the path which we took for understanding in the soyam devadatta here he says you forget about bhagatak lakshana the neelam utpalam blue lotus has only two stages the samana adhikaranam meaning of the words and vishesha visheshana bhavah mean sorry samana adhikaranam is the words themselves connection between the words and vishesha visheshana bhavah is connection between the meanings of the words and he says you can arrive at the meaning of the mahavakyam also using these two stages okay now all this is not there in the topic okay the topic is the answer to this question so this is one of the ways in which puro pakshi objections are taken care of the authors very often in even shankara vasham what happens is shankara gives a reply but the puro pakshi's actual objection is not recorded anywhere so you have why was it done all, all for brevity's sake if you are giving a reply obviously there must have been a question so the question you have to supply 
Okay, here the this objection we have to supply. That Purupakshi says, Neelam Utpallam, Blue Lotus has only two stages. This topic is the author's reply, Sadhananda's reply to this objection. So in this, in this topic, the author says, in the Mahavakyam, you cannot arrive at the final meaning in just two stages as you can in the Blue Lotus example. So he says, Asmin Vakye. In this Mahavakyam Tattvamasi, Vakyavat Vakyarthaha Na Sangachate. You cannot arrive at the final meaning by only going through two stages. Vakyavat, word meaning. Vakyarthaha, sorry, Vakyavat, words. Vakyarthaha, word meaning. So that Samanya Dikaranam. And Visheshana Vishesha Bhava stages are not sufficient to arrive at the meaning of the Mahavakyam. Neelam Utpalamiti, as in the case of the Blue Lotus. Now, because of this Neelam Utpalamiti word, you have to presume what I explained earlier, that that objection was there. Okay, so this is the introduction. And in the next topic, he actually gives the reply. So, we will read that. Topic 156. Tatratu Tatratu Nila Padartha Nila Gunasya Nila Padartha Nila Gunasya Utpala Padartha Utpala Dravyasya Utpala Padartha Utpala Dravyasya Vyavartakataya Anyonya Vyavartakataya Anyonya Visheshana Vishesha Rupa Visheshana Vishesha Rupa Tam Sargasya Anyatara Anyatara Vishishtasya Anyatarasya Vishishtasya Anyatarasya Tadaikasya Va Vakartya Vangi Tadaikasya Va Vakartha Vangi Kare Tadaikasya Va Vakartha Vangi Kare Suris Vakartha Va Angi Kare Pramanantara Viroda Bhavat Pramanantara Viroda Bhavat Advakya to Sanga Chate Advakya to Sanga Chate. So, if nothing else, at least you know your pronunciations of Hindi will improve, okay? You may not, you not actually learn Sanskrit. But the, they say that, you know, learning Sanskrit and chanting Sanskrit, it sort of clears up the knots in your tongue. You are able to speak much more clearly. So, at least that will happen. Now, here the question is, what the Purupakshi is saying is, how exact, when you say that there is a oneness, I came between something and something, what is the process followed by your brain, by your intellect. How does the intellect arrive at the conclusion that there is Aikya? That is a question. When I say this Jivatma and Paramatma are equal or that Devadatta and this Devadatta are the same, what is the process that has been followed by my intellect? It cannot be just you know a leap of faith. There must have been an intellectual conclusion. So, what is that process? That is a question. And here, he tries to explain. What is the process? What is meant by saying there is... Now, let us take the Nirodhpala. What is meant by saying there is Aikya, oneness, between the blue color and the lotus? Now, there are two processes by which the intellect understands this oneness between the blue color and the lotus. Okay. So, one is called samsagartha bodaha. So, you will find in the, in the particular text, there is a word samsagartha. 
the word blue is what it's an attribute to a noun that noun is a substance lotus so this lotus is a substance and the the attribute the adjective they can never be the same because one is a noun and one is an adjective and therefore the attribute which is the which is represented by the adjective and the substance which is represented by the noun they cannot be one and the same they are never one and the same but when our buddhi when our intellect understands them as one and the same what is what is understood by the intellect the association of the blue color with the lotus the association is called samsarga that's why samsarga artha bodha okay so the association is called samsarga association of what with what of the blue color with the lotus and when i say it is a blue lotus what i have done i have created an association between the lotus and the blue color i have created a a, a non separability between the lotus and the blue color and that is why my intellect says it is a blue lotus is taken as one substance when i take the blue lotus as one substance actually blue is a color it's adjective and lotus is a substance but when i in common knowledge in common parlance when i say blue substance uh, blue lotus for me blue lotus is a substance so to understand that is called the aikyam there is a oneness between the blueness and the lotus so that is called samsarga the association so that is one way of understanding this oneness samsarga artha bodha okay the other way is vishishta artha bodha now here the word blue does not directly relate to the color blue but by implication it refers to the blue substance do you see in one case in samsarga there is you have joined the two together there is samsarga been created there is a connection created between the blue and the lotus and it becomes one object blue lotus so that is one way of understanding the other way is that you for when you use the word blue you are not using the word as a color you are meaning the blue lotus as a as a entity itself and therefore by implication the word means blue blue means blue object and the word utpal refers to the object this is called vishishta revealing a substance so in this case the word neelam blue what it actually does is it reveals to you a substance which is a lotus thus both words in this case reveal substance only what did we say was the first method samsargartha we said in the previous interpretation one reveals a substance and one reveals an attribute i know we just said it but you know i am repeating it so that confusion is not there but i can still see a lot of confusion you have to struggle okay this the first one there are two things one is a object and one is the attribute in this case what is happening both the words they reveal only the object the moment you say blue you have connected it to the lotus so the only, only the object and this is another way of understanding <laughs> here the samsarga the non separability is not there it's a very fine distinction in this case the earlier case you understood as oneness because of non separability of the blue color and the lotus here you are understanding both words to mean the lotus only i came is understood of course in the final analysis whichever method you use the ultimate understanding is what 
there is a lotus which is blue in color. Okay, so in this case, what has happened? In understanding this blue lotus, only two steps have been taken. One is words, words, and one is the connection between two words. That was the initial one, attribute and guna. Other is connection between the meanings of the words, both pointing towards the same object. So he says, in this case of the blue lotus, you are right that you can arrive at the final meaning with the help of two steps only. Right? So you have to, the first step is Samanadikaranam and we come straight to the meaning of the word. So Tattaratu, in the case of blue lotus, we first supply the word-word meaning, word-word connection and then he says, Neela Padhartha Neela Gunasya. The word blue is a guna, an attribute, while utpala padartha, utpala dravas, dravyasya. Dravyam means substance. So, nila padartha means what? The meaning of the word blue is what? Nila gunasya is the blue color, the attribute. While in the second case, utpala padartha, the word utpala means utpala dravyasya is a substance. And in this case, what happens? When the intellect, <coughs> when your brain or intellect hears the word Neelam Utpalam, the blue lotus, what does it do? The intellect understands the blue attribute and he says, Bheda Vyavartakataya, it excludes the difference in the form of Chaukalya, Chaukalya Patadi. So, Chaukalya means Shaukle is a uh, white color. So, Shaukle Adi, you have to break that word properly. Shaukle Adi and Patadi. Shaukle Adi means white colors, etc. It excludes. Right? Intellect hears the word Neelam and it holds on to the blue, <coughs> blue color and excludes all other color. And Patadi Bheda Vyavar Takataya. It hears the word Lotus and excludes all other uh, substances like pata. Pata is cloth. Like pata, it excludes. It holds on to the lotus only. So, the intellect holds on to the blue color and holds on to the object lotus and therefore anon, anyonya visheshana vishesha rupa samsargasya. The intellect understands the oneness, the aikyam in terms of samsargasya, non-separatability, existing between visheshana, visheshya, the object, sorry, the adjective, visheshanam, and visheshya, the noun. This first method is samsargar, samsargartha bodaha, which I explained earlier. This is the, the words in this text which point to, point to that. And this, I already explained to you what is visheshtartha bodaha. So we come to that in the in the text it says anyataraha. In the other method, Vishishtasya Anyatarasya Tad Ekasya. The implied meaning of the word blue is the blue colored substance. And the implied meaning of the word lotus is the lotus substance. Whichever method you use, the final understanding of the intellect is what? Aikyam of the blue and the lotus. And why is it possible? Why is this possible? He says, Pramana Antara Viroda Abhava. Because this understanding is not contradicted by any other source of knowledge. Your eyes don't contradict it. Your sense of touch doesn't contradict it. No Pramanam contradicts this understanding in these two steps. Right? So he says, Vakya Artha Angikare. If you take such a meaning by arriving at that meaning in two steps, what happens? Tat Vakya Artha Sangachate. The meaning of the word Neela Utpala, blue lotus, is acceptable. Therefore, two stages are acceptable in the case of the blue lotus. Even though the words blue and lotus have different meanings, but in this sentence, they are put together in such a manner 
that they act as adjectives to each other. They qualify each other. And in this qualifying each other, what happens is they bring out a common idea. And what is that common idea? Common idea is the blue lotus. Okay, have I confused you thoroughly? <laughs> yes, Raviji. What is the confusion? Uh, sir, uh, can you just... If you, if you look um, at the Sanskrit, you're going to get confused because you all don't know Sanskrit. Yes. But yes. I am... Sir, explaining to you every word in English. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are taking, you have taken a lot of effort, sir. But I am just trying to think, how does it relate to our Mahavakyam and it'll come, it'll what come. should All be the next come. level? All that will come. Okay. He is still explaining okay. stuck on the blue lotus only. Okay. Once the okay. blue lotus idea is, okay, in your head, is clear in your mind, then only we can go to Mahavakyam. You cannot okay, go sir. to the abstract without going through the concrete. Okay, sir. Okay, so let us look at one more topic for today and then we'll end for today. Topic number 157. Atratu. Vam padhartha aparokshatva de vishishta chaitanyasya. Vam padhartha aparokshatva de vishishta chaitanyasya. Cha bheda vyavarta kataya. Cha anyonya bheda vyavarta kataya. Visheshana visheshya bhavaha. Visheshana visheshya bhavaha. Sam sargasya anyatara vishishtasya. Sam sargasya anyatara vishishtasya. Anyatarasya tadaikasya va. Anyatarasya tadaikasya va. Vakyarthatva angikare. Vakyarthatva angikare. Pratyakshadi pramana virodhat. Pratyakshadi pramana virodhat. Vakyartho na sangachate. Vakyartho na sangachate. Okay. So, tu. So, the word tu is in what we call in Sanskrit, Vailakshana Jyotina Artham. Vailakshanya Jyotina Artham, which means. Uh, unlike the previous example. Okay, so two here refers to the fact that unlike in the Neela Utpala, unlike in the Blue Lotus example, Atra. Atra means in this Mahavakyam, Tatvamasi, <coughs> what happens? Tatpadhartha Parokshatvadi Vishishta Chaitanyasya. Tat, tat, tatpada, the word Tat, reveals a remote Chaitanyam with Superior attributes. And Tvam Padhartha Aparokshatvadi Vishishta Chaitanyasya. Tvam Pada reveals a Chaitanyam which is intimate to you, which is the same as you, but possessed of Aparoksha, inferior gunas. What should you do? Anyonya Bheda Vyavarta Kataya by eliminating the mutual differences. Visheshana Visheshya Bhava Samsargasya. The Jivatma and the Paramatma will have some Sarga, association with each other. What will happen? The inferior attributes of the Jivatma will have some Sarga with Paramatma, will be associated intimately with the Paramatma. Right? So, he is saying that what will happen is that if you do this, I'll just cut. I'll just get back to you better. I'm in the middle of a class. So <clears throat> the inferior attributes of Jivatma will be associated very intimately with Paramatma. 
So if the inferior attributes of Jeevatma get associated with Paramatma, what will become? Paramatma become a samsari. Right? Or alternatively, the superior attributes of Paramatma will be associated with Jeevatma. And what will happen? Jeevatma will become Ishvara. So Jeevatma will become all powerful. What is the problem with that? Jeevatma will become omniscient. But we know that Jeevatma is not omniscient. Right? So he says, Anyatara Vishishtasya, Anyatarasya Tadekasya Va. Either way you understand, Vakya Artha Angikare, if you take such a meaning, Pratyakshadi Pramana Virodha. This is against all Pramanam. Because we know that Jiva is definitely not all powerful. Pratyaksha Pramanam. And we know that Ishwara is not Samsari, Shastra Pramanam. And therefore he says, Vakya Artha Na Sangachate. Such a meaning is not tenable if you stop with the first two stages in the case of the Mahavakya. So you know what he is saying, right? He is saying that if you don't go to the third stage, which is the Bhagatya Lakshana, Bhagat. then what will happen is that you have taken the Vachyartham of both. And in that meaning, what will happen is either Jivatma will become all powerful and become Ishwara, or Paramatma will become Samsari. Both of which are not acceptable because both go against Pramanam. One goes against Pratyaksha Pramanam, and one goes against Shastra Pramanam. Okay, so with this, we'll stop for today. It is very heavy, I know, but I would urge you to go again and again and again. And Read it up. Okay, so with this we'll stop. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamada Purnam Eva Vashate Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namashivaya. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you.